Okay, so here we're going to be painting Infamia Creek. Uh, this is a recording, uh, so I'm voice opening over for this. Uh, I had some real issues with the paint sticking to this model. Um, and I was really looking forward to this particular model, the Infamia Creek. It's a fantastic forgotten spell. And um, I really wanted to do it justice. Um, so there are sections of this video that have been sped up um, eight times speed. Uh, just to just to go through the process, um, it was about a three hour paint uh, job. So we're going to start with the skin. We start with a mix of basilicum grey uh, that we're now putting into our palette here. Um, if we looked at the card art, the skin is a kind of a grey with a slight skin tone tinge to it. Uh, so I was trying to replicate that colour with it. Um, so to thin it down, because I obviously didn't want it to look like a stone golem, uh, I'm going in with some contrast medium here, which is the technical um, fluid from Citadel. Uh, a decent amount of this, I would say about uh, the same again, the same amount of contrast medium as the basilicum and grey. And then about a brush full, so about a third of what I use on the basilicum and grey as gillum and flesh. And this is going to give the, the tone I was hoping for. So that's all mixed up. You can see in the well of the uh, palette there. And I'm just testing on this kitchen roll um, what the colours look like. It gives it quite a fair representation, the kitchen roll, actually. Um, it has a off-white tone, very similar to the Wraithbone spray. I should have mentioned that first of all, uh, that I've primed with a Wraithbone. Windsor & Newton Series 7 brush, size 0, is what I'm using as per normal. Now you can see here that the paint is basically just repelling off the miniature itself and it's um, it's not working. So as soon as I put that first coat on, uh, tried to put the first coat on, I was uh, or the first paint on the miniature, I noticed that we're going to come into some problems while trying to paint this miniature. Um, so I sped this up uh, just because I was going over the same area over and over and over again, which is really what I had to do to power through to get that paint to stick, is just go over and over in the area. Now that that will give it a slightly darker tone than it would normally do, um, but the final effect was okay. I, I was I was pretty pleased with the final effect. After I had spent all of the time and effort to keep going over the same area over and over again to get that paint to stick. Um, in hindsight, it hasn't quite got as much red tinge to it as I wanted uh, the Gilliman flesh to, to do. I did perhaps didn't use enough, um, but I wasn't to know this until it had dried. Uh, so you can see here, I'm going over that area, that one small part of area, many, many times just to get the paint to stick. And sometimes you've got to wait for it to dry just slightly before you go back over it. And uh, you can see here, that. The contrast is still doing its work, and it helps to, for it to be speeded up here because this looks like it would be done in normal time. <laughs> so I would take this. I would say this took me eight times longer uh, to paint all of the skin uh, tone. Now, being thinned down with that uh, contrast medium will not have helped. Uh, it tried to stick to this miniature, um, but in the future, I'm going to make sure I have given them, even though I did do with these miniatures, uh, give them a really good warm soapy uh, scrub first with a toothbrush and then prime them and only prime them when I'm about to paint them. Uh, I seem to seen I've seen the effects of uh, painting it a recently primed miniature rather than leaving it for some time. Uh, it seems to work better. Okay so just carrying on with the legs here and you can just see uh, even with the video sped up how bad the paint is take is, is is how bad it is that the paint's not taking to the model there. Um, but we power on through. It was much to my frustration because this was a long time. I know it's not a long time on this video, but it was a long time just painting with skin tone where it really should have been a short a short job. Uh, so you can see here the effect is actually pretty good. Um, I'm quite pleased. I'm just pointing out there that it is a lot darker tone than I would hope. I mean it will dry lighter. 
it does dry lighter, that is true, but it doesn't look like stone, which is where I wanted to keep away from. I wanted it to look um, certainly much lighter than stone. Okay, so um, having looked at it, and <laughs> many, many, many minutes later, I decided, right, I think, I think it was about 35, 40 minutes, just, yeah, about 35 minutes just painting, it's crazy, just painting that uh, skin tone. Right, Apothecary White is next, uh, and we're going to hit in here, the Apothecary where, with the stone columns that he's got in his chains as his weapons. Now, they've got a kind of marble look to them on the uh, card art, so that's what I wanted to go in with the Apothecary White. I think it gives quite a nice marble effect, especially if uh, your miniature has got good detail recesses that the contrast paint can actually recess into, which this certainly does. Um, so both are done with this contrast medium, what am I talking about, with this uh, apothecary white contrast paint um, to give that kind of marble effect as the stone columns. So at this point I'm going, well actually that apothecary white, that went on really quite well. Uh, and it did, it did, the apothecary white really went on surprisingly well. Um, I didn't have to do multiple coats, it was just one coat wonderful that so that's that was really good so I thought well uh, perhaps the rest will be fine perhaps the rest rest will be fine and uh, as you'll find out it wasn't <laughs> unfortunately um, I had the same problems again um, so a bit, it's a bit strange that it happens for some of the miniature not for other bits so now we're moving into skeleton horn and we're doing the horns of uh, the helmet well, not the helmet, sorry, the horns of the actual Infamia Creek. That's not the helmet's horn. Uh, and that's just going straight on. Again, this went on really well uh, as a one coat. So, um, you know, things were looking good now. I was thinking, well, okay, we should be all right from now on. It was perhaps just that skin tone with the, uh, the contrast medium really making an effect. Again, uh, that skeleton horde will dry um, a lighter tone eventually. Uh, then I realised that, uh, well hang on, let's let's do the hooves. Uh, the hooves could be done, excuse me, with the same again. So thinking the hooves can be done the same again. Actually, the hooves were done with Agoras Dunes, not Skeleton Hordes. So I wanted them to be slightly different, slightly darker tone. So this was done with Agoras Dunes, Agoras Dunes I should say. Um, this went on, I mean the detail again, the detail on these Ludus Magnus uh, miniatures are just insanely good, um, really nice uh, defined details uh, which contrast mediums just love. So again, putting the Agaros dunes on, it seemed to go on absolutely fine, uh, one coat wonder. So I didn't need to really speed this up because it was a very quick job, uh, even though getting underneath uh, this miniature so some parts of the details are really awkward with the paintbrush. Um, but yeah, there are pretty much no problems, no dilemmas with the hooves. As you can see, it's going on really nice. Given that fantastic detail we love, the contrast, me uh, contrast paints. Uh, fortunately, we get the same problem with that lid of the Citadel paint pot that it doesn't stay open, uh, and a number of my paints do that, which is frustrating, especially when you're doing this and you're holding. And... Oh, and there we go. Uh, it happens to the best of us spilling paint pots. I mean, that's partly reason because I was in a quite small area. So we fast forward to me cleaning up. I used a uh, this is snake bite leathers next, by the way. Um, I was creating the uh, the, the tunic uh, colour, uh, which is like a reddy brown. So the spilling paint pot, I used a big brush to soak soak up as much paint and put it back into the pot as possible. Um, but ultimately, I lost a fair amount of paint in that spillage. And, you know, it, it happens to all of us, I'm sure. Um, at least it didn't go over any card art or miniatures or anything like that, so that's always good. And I added to the snake bite leather is Blood Angels Red. 
So no contrast medium here. I wanted it quite a nice deep uh, brown red uh, colour. Uh, so now putting this on, I'm noticing, oh dear, it's I'm getting the same problem as with the skin, and this with without the contrast medium. So this is literally just um, parts of the miniature. Really pleased with the colour, um, but this took ages and ages because it just would not stick to parts of this um, parts of this miniature, which is just a nightmare, especially when you're trying to do detail parts. So, and you can just see that I'm going over and over and over. This is again eight times sped up. So, imagine this taking eight times longer than what it is on this video. And part of that was just literally going over and over the same area over again. Really frustrating. And you can kind of see it on the video. The paint just recesses back into one area. Very odd. So we crack on, uh, continue with this tunic as it were. As I said, this took a long time considering it's, you know, it shouldn't have been such a massive job. Um, but the detail, again, because of the detail, the highly defined detail of this part of the miniature, um, this, this paint went on. The paint actually finished paint job of this part. Absolutely fantastic. I love the colour. And, and, and it's really picking up the detail as well. Um, so we're just trying to do the pack part again, just over and over and over the same areas again and again and again to get that paint to stick. But we eventually get there. Uh, we managed managed to finish that that skirt part of the uh, of the miniature of this infamy of Crete, and. Uh, just looking at it here, uh, I'm, I'm loving the colour. So we've got hair, we've got hair around the hooves of the miniature. Um, so I decided to go for the hair as Black Templar. A fantastic contrast paint. Um, it gives a really, really nice uh, tone or tonal difference between uh, the parts of the well-defined figure. And you'll see it as I start to put it on. So, um, again, as it dries, it just gives such a good effect uh, once it is dry. And it's a good contrast as well bet between that and the uh, agarous dunes of the hooves themselves. Not a huge amount of the miniature has got the hair on it, so just touching up all the parts of the hair, or the fur, I suppose you can call it. And then we move on from that point. Um, I think we move on to the head hair. Did it work? What? I can't remember what they call that in Greek and Roman terms. So we're going Blood Angels Red. Um, we're talking about the uh, the horse hair of the helmet. The bit they used to brush the underside of the horses with. Although he could brush the underside of a very big horse with that the size of that helmet. Uh, so we're just putting that all on, and uh, really nice, vibrant red. Uh, this wasn't too bad, it was stuck to the miniature mostly. There were parts, there we go, you can see there, certainly the flat parts of the miniature, um, which really struggled again to take the paint. Um, but we eventually got there, uh, just being careful not to go over the skin tone, of course, because that would be a disaster. And uh, I just did there, so that was just removing the red paint. So we carry on. Uh, with that red, uh, that's looking really nice and vibrant. Um, and the infamy of Crete is starting to come along. And I'm very aware that I'm getting close to get, coming to the metal work. That was the bit I was waiting to get to, so I could really just um, <laughs> paint over this this miniature and try and get the paint to stick. So uh, before we do that, we've got to do all of the uh, strapping uh, and the kind of leather work. So Wildwood is the paint I use for this. Uh, this is a really nice deep brown contrast paint. Uh, but I get the same problems as I've got for most of the miniature where the paint really is not sticking. Um, so again, this takes a long time in comparison to what it should do, um, which is a real shame. So we'll fast forward again. 
uh, this part uh, as I continue to go over and over and over the same spaces again and again and again just to power through and get that down. You can see how bad it really is there um, and how much paint it takes which means the more paint you put on the darker the tone and the worse the effect to be honest. Um, so yeah, really disappointed that it was doing this so badly. And now moving on to the arm straps, which were better. I have to be honest, they were better. They're still not perfect, but compared to those, the uh, the chest padding, uh, padding and straps uh, like this, oh, it's just terrible. So you can see the amount of times I had to go over the same area over and over again. Still gave a good contrast look at the end of it. I'm still happy with it, but it was a bit darker than I was hoping for. And uh, now doing the uh, the wrists. Um, I'll do two straps on his right hand wrist. Um, but when I come to do the second one, I realise, well, hang on, it's all really just brown, um, apart from the metal band that goes around connecting his weapon to his hand so I just fill in that with the brown there we go so that's wildwood going on and then I realize I need to do the backs of the leg armor not been doing too bad to stick to that part which is nice and he's really starting to come along now which is the great thing about contrast paints is seeing that immediate effect really taking, 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 uh, taking effect pretty much straight away, which is really nice. Now we move on to lead belcher. So I open my new lead belcher paint pot because I've pretty much run out of the last one. And this is a base paint, uh, so make sure you use a little bit of water to make it thinner. I didn't use much water at all on this one because I knew I wanted to get a coating happening. So, grabbing it on, and uh, now we're going to cover all of the metallic parts of the miniature. So this is a huge chunk of the miniature now. Um, that take a lot. It took a lot of time. Again, it, even this wasn't even sticking great. It wasn't sticking greatly to the uh, miniature, which is really a shame. Um, so all around the belt. Now, I'm going to have a mix of gold and silver. Um, effects going across all the metallic parts of the miniature um, but I'm using the lead belcher as the base for all of those so even the gold has got a lead belcher base in this case uh, the knees make sure we've got those covered the shins so all the leg armor going on here and you can see you know it's, it's, a, it's not a small miniature so there's a fair amount and I went through a fair amount of paint as well um, there's a fair amount of miniature to cover with this paint and you want it to be uh, really quite put on decently thick in terms of thickness and liberally in terms of paint uh, just to get a really good metallic covering of that miniature and now we're doing the chains and the, uh, the clasps that are holding those pillars of stone awesome the chain itself um, which is not small so it requires a fair amount of paint as well and I realize well if I go through all the detail with my size zero I can use the thicker brush to kind of do the detail uh, sorry to do the thick parts and the majority of it so I do that later on with the other hand now we're doing the shoulder armor and again it wasn't it wasn't taking the paint perfectly which is a bit of a shame so it had to be had to go over a few times um, but just making sure I've got all the all of the area covered because when I put the contrast paint over the top of it you want it to cover the whole lot so you've got to be pretty careful with all of that uh, the other shoulder smaller shoulder pad, shoulder armor going through the detail now to make sure I've left the brown behind on the strapping so doing buckles and uh, the chest part there, the buckles in the back. Now I'm doing the other arm. As you can see, I'm just getting all the detail work done first and get 
the rest of the chain done. Moving on. And completing the other buckle for the um, the chain. Now the foot armor, I guess, or hoof armor, <laughs> I suppose it is. And now the helmet, of course. Uh, the helmet is metal, so uh, making sure to take my time with this. I do not want to go over the, any of the horn uh, or the hair or the face or any skin tone because that would ruin it and I'd have to redo that whole part. So just being uh, careful here, but I wasn't that super careful because I did actually go over some, I touched it on some of the horns. Um, nothing too bad, nothing too much to change. So, is that the lead belcher done? I think uh, looks like we're doing a little bit more. Uh, yes, the detail of the uh, the cloth, uh, the, the the armor around the waist, the skirt, as it were. And now I'm doing the detailing. Now again, the the models, these models for Black Rose Wars, the the detail is so defined. It's literally just kind of almost edge highlighting, um, but just getting your paintbrush and just placing it over that detail. It really was easy. Uh, to give a pretty decent effect in a short amount of time. So going over all of the metal work now for, which is to be honest, like two or three uh, little circles and then uh, the kind of end of the strap for each one. But being careful of course, because I didn't want to go over any of that uh, work that I spent so long uh, doing for that work. So I wanted it to be neatly done. And it's important to be careful at this stage um, before on this basing with the metallics. It's a really important stage to be careful while you're doing it. So that's the metallic base done. So while that was drying, uh, I thought we'll carry on and just do keep doing some of the detail. Um, so the next one we move on to, I think is Black Templar. Uh, which we use on the mouth. So we're just putting black template in the mouth, making sure to leave the teeth alone as best as I can, because uh, I don't want to have to go kind of over those teeth again. So black template into the mouth, which really, just do that little that little step, really height in the face. It made the face just perfect. I was like, oh well, really need to do that. Um, next we move on to. Kind of thinking about, I think I'll move on to the, to the uh, pillars themselves, I believe. Um, but uh, just looking around, and I see ah, I've left the uh, the strapping from the the backs of the knees and that knee armor. So rather than using the wildwood, I decided to go with snake bite leather to give a slightly different tone. So snake bite leather's next. It's a more of a yellow tone. It's what I used with the red on the on the uh, skirt. And the paint wasn't really taking here, so this was another case of going over the same area many times again. As you can see there, and then it's just doing both those areas, kind of around the knees as well that the snake bite hit. So definitely coming along, definitely coming along. We can see the, the different areas now uh, coming into effect. Uh, the metal obviously needs to be done. Uh, so next we move on to Wraithbone. Now this is the base paint. And it's really good for doing touch-ups. So if you make mistakes, uh, just get yourself a pot of this Wraithbone uh, base paint. And then because you've used the spray to prime it, it's like re-priming certain areas. Kind of essential when using contrast paints. So around his belt, he's uh, above and below. He's got like this white frill, I guess is the best way to describe it, uh, which I kind of went over 
uh, when I was painting the metallics, as well as the skin tone actually. So I really wanted that white to, to pop um, and to be really clear. So this is why I'm going over it with the wraith bone next. Sometimes awkward to hold the miniature and, and to, to again not to go over and uh, the metallic not so much is a problem but certainly the kind of the, the strapping for the uh, the skirt there that would be pretty horrendous going over that with the wraith bone. And also the bits that I got the metal, the lead belcher on by accident, uh, two parts, or one part from each horn, um, I managed to keep metal on. Uh, I'm just going over that with the wraith bone, which will cover it, and then I can go with skeleton horde once again. Once it's dry. Okay, so that's the touch up done. Make sure you keep your brushes clean throughout your paint job. Um, quite regularly uh, get water on them. You don't want paint drying at the base of the bristles. That will just ruin the brush. Anyway, so just check in the, uh, the artwork and how he's progressing. Uh, the skin tone I notice here is, is it's a little bit too white. It needed a little bit more of a pinkish t tone to it. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I, th I still think it looks good. Um, but yeah, it could have done with a little bit more of a red tinge to it. So the end in yellow is coming in next, and this is the uh, first part of the uh, metallic. So this is where the gold, any gold effects I want, and detail over the metal, you literally just put the end in yellow on, and it immediately goes gold. It's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, so the belt detail here, um, there's a fair amount of gold to be done, so again, we're going to fast forward this in eight times speed. Um, but you'll see here, again, because of such pronounced detail, it was relatively easy to get to get that, that gold def defined on the miniature. And then any bits that you kind of missed with the lead belcher will literally this, uh, this stage where you go over with the contrast paint will cover it uh, and it will look fine. So all the detailing here being done, uh, then the armour. Uh, this was a real pleasure to see progress as I was doing it because uh, it just seeing that gold colour come through, it's just so nice. Um, and you know, it was, this part's really easy and it doesn't take that, that long um, and just shows the fruits of the labour of your basing. And here you can see how the gold's just coming out so well on that on that shoulder armor. Really, really chuffed with that. So now we're just looking to see what else is gold. And there is a fair amount of it, uh, including the wrist guards or wrist armor. And that's uh, it's kind of like the trim of that, the trim of the leg armor. All of that's got gold trim. And detailing the knee again, really, really uh, pronounced detail of the miniature, the sculpting of it. Uh, so really easy to pick out all of the detail. Here I'm just removing some of the yellow. I think I just brushed over it pretty silly by accident. Uh, doing the helmet here and the helmet detail, which has got the gold parts. So that's why it's slightly out of shot, just to really make sure I'm picking up the right detail for that. Uh, the shoulder. And it was here that I realised, uh, hang on a minute, I've just gone over uh, the chest. So I'm just doing a quick fix there with the wraith bone base. And then back onto the gold. Doing the rest of the legs. And that is the gold trim finished. So the metalwork using gold. Now basilicum grey will finish the miniature off for all the silver metallic work, which is kind of a lot of the in-between parts of the gold work. 
so the chain of course and you can see I sped, sped it up again 8 times speed uh, just to get through all of that silver work and th th I love this I love this effect because it looks very much like cheap plastic silver uh, when you just put the lead belcher on um, it's when you put this, the contrast uh, paint, the basilican grey, when you put that on, it goes into all the crevices like contrast paint does, and it just, but it keeps that metallic uh, shine coming through, uh, but it dulls it so it doesn't look stupid, and it looks looks so realistic. I do love it. Just doing the detailing around the pillars there, making sure um, to get that definition. Here we're going over the armour and you can immediately see that we're getting this more realistic looking silver metallic colour. Or steel I suppose you could call it. Doing the buckles and the chest armour here. And the belt. And he's really coming along now. And of course the wrists as well. Getting all of that armour nicely done. And you can see there that we're still getting a metallic look. But it's, it's a really nice realistic metallic look. Which is exactly what I was after. And now we're just doing the legs. Speed up again. And just going in between the gold parts. Even if you go over the gold parts, they'll still come out gold. It will dull them quite considerably um, with the basiculum grey. Um, but it'll still work. And now, of course, the rest of the mask. The helmet, sorry. Not mask. So, you know, a decent sized miniature. A fair amount of detail. It did take a reasonable amount of time wasn't helped by the fact that the paint was being rejected a lot of the time. So, he's really come along now. Um, we've got a few more bits to do, of course. Uh, the bit that I touched up on the skin, his upper chest and his neck, I'm now going back over with that paint. It stayed, moist, uh, stayed wet um, with the contrast medium. Uh, so it's fine to just go straight over with that. There we go. She didn't want that to be pure white, of course. And you can see that he's looking really good now. Really coming along. Okay, so Wildwood is coming in now. Um, and the reason why is uh, we just noticed that a little bit on the kind of that area, the skirt area, that there it was a bit unpainted, as it were, and it was it certainly wasn't his skin. It didn't make any sense. It was kind of like the uh, the fabric of part of that armor. So just touching up with the wild wood. You can see a close up view. And now the Apothecary White, uh, which is going to be the uh, the belt, the thrills of the belt. Uh, they need to have some contrast on them rather than just being plain white. Apothecary White is such a great contrast paint. Technically is a little bit grey of course, but uh, it's, it's such a fantastic colour or paint to use. It's not really, not really a colour, it's a mix of... Um, all colours to make. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, what's all that? So it's part. It's part. It's really a grey contrast paint, but it's um, it's so it's so mellow in terms of its colour, but it gives a really great effect. And if you want to see it really being used well, it's uh, if you check my video on Ezio from Black Rose Wars Sator Box Expansion. Uh, you'll see, you'll see uh, how good it can be on big areas because his iconic white tunic um, 
is really shown off in that miniature. Okay, so there's the Apothecary White uh, done on the belt. And we're just literally going through uh, the parts of the miniature now. We've done the metallic parts. Uh, we now need to focus on the details. Uh, and here I'm just putting some more of that paint, some of that more of that um, that mix, that skin tone mix that I still had in the thing. The reason why is because I felt the face was a bit white, it didn't have enough detail going on. Um, it was very pale, so I wanted some more uh, detail, some more contrast into that. Okay, next we're moving on to Skeleton Horde. I uh, remember the bits that I uh, corrected, they need to be painted, so that's what I'm doing here. Just painting over those corrected parts, those patches with the Skeleton Horde. Skeleton Horde, I mean, it's a light enough colour that you can easily do that. Uh, normally, you'd have to repaint the whole area. Uh, or else you would get a really terrible effect. So, uh, the Infamy Crete is looking really good now after some horrendous efforts, um, <laughs> parts to the paint shop uh, where the paint just was not sticking, making the the duration of this paint uh, job a lot longer. Okay, next we move on, I think, what am I doing next? So now we move on to a shade. So this is not a contrast paint, this is Nulm Oil, which is a shade. Okay, really a wash. Um, a lot of play, other companies call it a wash. And I'm just trying to do some detailing on the pillars. Uh, so looking at the card art, they've got some tonal differences, uh, especially at the bottom of the pillars. So I'm just using Nulm Oil to give them a bit of weathering look. Rather than, I thought they just looked a bit too good, a bit too clean. Because uh, they were uh, smashed apart and probably been used for many millennia, <laughs> something like that, um, by this infamy of Crete. So just get on, just on the bottom, and not using a huge amounts of this null oil, um, and making sure it's it's not got a line, <laughs> like a dead an obvious line where the uh, normal oil has been put on and where it hasn't and you know this is this is a completely optional step um, but it just gives gives it a little bit more life in terms of those uh, those pillars a little bit more history should we say and use I think next we move on to the yep the mouth uh, especially the teeth so to give the effect of uh, the better definition of the teeth and the mouth, uh, just chucking in a load of non oil will really do the job. It won't go over the white of the teeth. It might tone them down slightly, but not by much. But a really nice effect. Okay. So you can see, uh, in terms of the base paint, the Infamy Crew is pretty much done. Uh, I just need to do some, some more work on the details. Uh, first of all, I noticed that I left the foot out in terms of it still just lead belcher base. So the Basilicum Grey comes on now just to finish off that metal, uh, which is down by the foot there, uh, just to make sure I've got all of that covered. And you can see here, like, uh, you don't have to be super, super careful. The gold will show through, even if you go over it with this basilicum grey, as long as you don't use too much. And it will give you different tones of gold, which is always good. It looks like it's weathered or used. Um, so, yeah. it's um, It really does come out really well. I'm just trying to get in. It's quite hard to do, because you've got to put your, your, your brush in it 
different angles just to get in into the right places of that of that foot armor. Okay, there we go. So that is that bit done and that mistake averted, as it were. And next we go on to the Blood Angel Red. I noticed that there's a few little tiny white patches in the head hair, the helmet hair. Literally, I think one or two white patches. So just, just filling those in, making sure that it's got an area completely covered. Excellent. So a small, a small little job, but important one. I wanted to keep the vibrant red look of that helmet. Okay, so next we move on to the horns. It's the last bit that needs to kind of be done. Uh, so just zooming in the camera here a little bit more to hopefully get a better view. Uh, but he's looking really good. I was really pleased with how he is coming out. Um, I didn't think it would... A uh, lot of stages on that, I didn't think it was going to work. So, null oil, oil first. And I'm basically just going to put a whole area of the horns uh, with this null oil. If you look at the card, I, uh, the horn's got uh, certainly a darker area at the tips compared to the base of the horn. So, going down quite low with null oil here. Try Again, try not to get like a defined line between where the non oil starts and where the horn, uh, skeleton horde finishes as it were. Uh, it's obviously very, it's a wash, so it's very, very thin in terms of paint, a lot thinner than the, the, the uh, contrast paints. But the beauty of this is, uh, and how I use it here, now I'm not sure I would do this in the future, um, I'd probably go in, as I've done before in previous videos, where you put, you notice know, so I go in with black temp Templar in a minute, just on the tips, and then it kind of bleeds through onto the the, the water, waterness of the um, of, of that shade. Um, I'd probably go in with the black Templar and then just use the contrast medium to, uh, to kind of wet blend it down or, um, you know, but anyway, well, we did it this way this time. So Black Templar, uh, I'm going in the top of the horns with the Black Templar. And what you'll see happening is I feed that down the horn to get the desired effect. Again, trying not trying to get a little bit of a blend going on, because uh, I don't want to fine line. But I certainly want it to look darker at the top. So just yeah, just mixing in those two paints, the shade and the and the contrast. Um, but ultimately, I'm really pleased with the the end effect. I think it it certainly works, um, and it gives a bit of a, a better detail compared to just skeleton horde used on the horns. And it, and if not, it kind of highlights that bright red uh, hair that's, that's on the miniature. Okay, so that's the horns now pretty much finished. And it really is coming towards the end of painting this miniature. So next, um, that's the miniature mostly done. Uh, so now we need to think about the next stage, which is going back to Basiliconum Grey and doing the base. Uh, so we go in Basilicon Grey to do all of the uh, stonework of the base itself. Uh, again, the, the bases are so well defined, so detailed. They are quite hard to paint and um, paint well, <laughs> I find, um, because the detail is so pronounced and you, you've got a pre-assembled miniature, right, that, that it's on the base. So unlike perhaps GW or whatever where you get your base and model it or whatever, 
Uh, you can paint your base and then you can get the miniature on it afterwards. Uh, and then you can really work on the base and get the details. This was a lot harder. So you can see me coming to shot there. It's because I'm really trying to look into the details of that miniature. And especially the base. But it gives a really nice effect, the grey. Uh, yeah, I was getting some repelling paint yet again. Um, but it, it ultimately it came out fine. So after the stonework of the base, using the Basiliconum Grey, we move on to the stems of all the roses, all of the, uh, the vines, I suppose, uh, and that's using Warp Lightning Green. And again, it, it took a little while because I had to go over the same area a few times. And that, that's, that's really hard when you talk about small detail. Um, remembering to leave as best as I could, leave the roses, and uh, not to cover the roses with the green, or the, or the silicone grey to be honest. I'm just filling in all of those stems now. Okay, so that's the stems finished. So then we need to um, do the roses themselves is the next stage. And I use three different colored roses. I use a uh, red rose, a white rose, and a black rose rose, a black rose rose, <laughs> uh, which is um, kind of like got a reddish tinge. You can see it on, actually on the top left. If you look at the Novatus uh, Black Rose Wars, the actual logo itself, that was the look I wanted to try and get for some of the black roses. So starting with a Wraithbone base again, and the reason why is because I needed to make sure that those roses were just those colours and not got green on them or grey. Uh, so just going over the roses here, uh, just to pick out the detail and make sure they are fully ready to put the colour on in terms of all of their detail. And yeah, you know, that's the thing. It's just, it's just it's just taking your time in checking checking uh, for any things that you need to touch up. You need to make sure you ret uh, retify whatever it is. So first of all, the red. Uh, so this is for the centre of the black rose wars, as well as any red black rose roses, uh, as well as any red roses as well. So here you see, I'm just going over the middle part of that one. And that one. Trying to put an even number of each. So th three black roses. And now we're going to go in with a red. To actually paint a fully red rose. Nice vibrant red. To stand out. And this is real time, so you can see that this stage doesn't take too long. Just try and get an even coating of different ones. It's just the way I base them. Again, you can do them all the same colour, you can have them in bunches, it's, it's kind of up to you. And now we move on to the second colour of rose which is the apothecary white uh, just leaving the black rose wall roses not 
I should just call them black roses, right? That would make more sense. Then finally in with black templar to finish off the black roses. And just going straight over the red and because it's a contrast paint, it will sh it's semi translucent, so it'll uh, it'll come through. The red does come through. It looks really nice. Pretty much the same as what's on the art, to be honest. I think I just went over a bit there. And the final one, or two. Sorry, it's a lot of this is out of shots because I was really looking at the detail. I'm just making sure I hit everything. Okay. And just make sure you get the backs of the roses as well as the fronts. So that's like that's all the roses done. And of course the final thing is to uh, finish off the base by giving it a black outer rim. So to do this I've got just a cheap black acrylic paint um, that I use. Sorry about the camera shake. It's like one, it's, what was it, like pound sixty for a massive tub. It's quite, it's, it's more watered down compared to the Citadel paints, um, but it, it's fine. And it, it, you know, you can get away with, to be honest, you probably want to be going in with at least two coats of this. Um, so this is sped up now, just while I finish off the miniature. Uh, it just it just gives it a lovely border, and it completes the miniature and the piece. And that is the Infamous Creek finished. So as I said, in real time, I, I think this took about three hours. I've obviously sped up a fair amount of the sections, especially the skin and the metal work. Um, but ultimately, I was really pleased with how he turned out. He um, it looks good. I love the colour of that skirt I think it came out absolutely perfect um, exactly what I wanted the colour the skin could have done with a little bit more of a red tinge to it I must be honest uh, that would have been better the metal works sublime I love that metal work it, it came out so well I'm so pleased with that um, so yeah overall really pleased